How does fossilised wood form? OK, let's start with the basics. What exactly is fossilised wood? Well, I know I'm going to blow some minds, but fossilised wood is essentially wood that, at some point, has become fossilised. Minds blown? I know, totally what we're about. Now we can move on to something slightly less patronising. Fossilised wood essentially forms through a process known as petrification, which is where organic material, i.e. wood, is gradually transformed into rock over very long periods of time. Now, the process begins when a tree or woody plant dies and becomes buried under layers and layers of sediment, such as things like sand or silt or maybe mud. What I'm going to do, because I'm nice, is I'm going to break this down into five manageable stages to make it a little bit more linear and easier to process. So let's start in numerical order, because that's the only order that makes sense, with number one. Ready? Stage one. Burial and preservation. The first step of the formation of fossilised wood is essentially burial. This is when a tree will fall or is washed up into sedimentary environments. It gets covered by sediment protecting it from decay and exposure to the elements. Over time, the sediment accumulates, creating layers that then apply pressure on that buried wood. Stage 2. Absorption of minerals. OK, now as the wood starts to get buried deeper and deeper, it starts to undergo a process called diagenesis. Now, groundwater rich in minerals then seeps into the surrounding sediment and then infiltrates the pores of the cells of the wood. The minerals, which are usually silicates like quartz or calcite or pyrite, replace the original organic material bit by bit over time, transforming the wood into a mineralized replica. Stage three, replacement and mineralization. Uh, yeah. During the petrification process, the minerals then precipitate and fill the empty spaces left by the decaying wood cells. Now, this replacement of organic matter with minerals is essentially called permineralization, which I did try to write in the title, but it was too long. So you're going to have to deal with mineralization. I hope that's OK. If it's not, get a grip. The minerals may retain the original structure of the wood as well, capturing the intricate details of the tree's growth rings, bark, and even the cellular features. Stage 4. Geological time and pressure. As millions of years pass, layers of sediment above the buried wood continue to accumulate, adding more and more and more weight and pressure to the wood. This pressure helps compress the sediment and the petrified wood, aiding in the preservation. Over time, the minerals completely replace the organic material, resulting in a solid rock-like structure. Final stage. Exhumation and discovery. Now, the final stage in the formation of fossilised wood occurs when various geological processes, such as things like erosion or uplift or even tectonic plate movements, expose the petrified wood to the surface. These natural forces gradually erode the overlying sediment. This reveals the fossilised wood to be discovered by scientists, paleontologists, or just curious people out for a walk. Conclusion. Nice. It's probably important to note that the process of fossilization is extremely slow. It can take thousands or even millions of years. The exact conditions required for the formation of fossilized wood, including the presence of water, the type of minerals available, the absence of oxygen, all contribute to the successful preservation of ancient plant material. Fossilised wood provides valuable insights into the Earth's past, allowing scientists and enthusiasts like myself to study ancient forests and gain a deeper understanding of the planet's history. Bye.